What's going on YouTube? In this video, we're gonna talk about how one wholesale deal landed a wholesaler that I know 17 years in the federal penitentiary. Keep watching. All right, so how the heck does somebody go to prison for 17 years because of one wholesale transaction? Well, my friends, the devil is in the details. So let's rewind back to 2012 and we are coming out of the financial crisis of 2008. And so in 2008, we all know there was a real estate crash. Uh, the real estate market went from, you know, probably lost about 90% of its value in certain markets. It was crazy, right? Houses in Phoenix, Arizona that were selling for 500,000 were selling for 25,000. Nothing made any sense. No one knew where the bottom was. It was pandemonium, but it, there was an opportunity for investors to start buying deals at crazy, crazy discounts. Now, one of those processes was through buying and selling short sales. Now, buying and selling short sales isn't inherently illegal. The issue that happened here was that the bank that was allowing the short sale to occur in this specific deal had a document called a short sale addendum that had a bunch of rules that they needed this individual or the people that were involved in the transaction to follow in order for the short sale to be approved. Now, what ended up happening was the wholesaler that was in that deal basically looked at that rule sheet as suggestions rather than rules that he should follow. And what ended up happening was uh, because he basically broke every one of those rules, the federal government got involved and he ended up going to prison for 17 years. So I'll tell you exactly what took place. So there was a property and um, it was a, a home that was like high value and million dollar plus property at the time. This is like at the height of 2007 and it was in foreclosure. So the people who had bought it, they went into financial crisis and they no longer could afford the payments and so they had to walk away from the property. The, um, the bank was, actually they didn't walk away from the property, they, were, they decided to short sale the property. Uh, and a short sale, for those of you that aren't aware of what a short sale is, a short sale is when you sell a property or you and the bank allow for a property to be sold for less than the amount of the mortgage on that property. So the mortgage on this property was like $800,000. The property at the height of the market was worth a million. And the seller was trying to short sell it to a buyer who ended up being this wholesaler for like $400,000. So the bank was gonna lose money. Everyone was losing money basically in this situation. It was terrible, except for the investor. The investor was trying to get a great deal and wanted to then probably flip it and, and make a profit. And all of that's legal. All of that would have been fine. Unfortunately, what had happened was the wholesaler uh, put it under contract and as part of the short sale addendum, uh, there was a stipulation in the addendum that said that the wholesaler was not allowed to be in a contract to sell the property while or before he was purchasing the house. And so the bank didn't want to allow for a wholesale transaction. The bank wanted that man to buy it, hold it for 90 days, and then sell it. That was the rule the bank wanted him to follow. He decided to skirt the rule and he actually had it sold. So he did it by double escrow and he used separate title companies so that the funds could flow through from one to the other. And he in fact sold that property to his parents, which was another rule that he broke on the short sale addendum because the short sale addendum said that if in the future he planned to sell it, he needed it needed to be an arm's length transaction, meaning he couldn't sell it to anyone he knew and he couldn't sell it back to the original property owner. The bank didn't want the original property owner to get the house again and they didn't want this person to sell it to somebody that they knew. I don't know why the bank cared, but they cared. And it was in that disclosure document or that addendum that he had to sign and abide by. And he in fact puts his parents in the deal, right? So he puts his parents in this contract and they close on it. Their funds go in to satisfy the short sale and you think everything is fine. Two years later, the FBI comes knocking on this man's door 
and they bring out these contracts and say, would you care to explain what you did here? You signed an affidavit stating that you weren't in contract to sell this property to anybody else, yet on the same day that you purchased and you actually also sold the deal. And it seems that you sold this deal to an individ individuals who have the same name as you. Is there any relation between these two people and you? Well, yeah, they're my parents. Okay, well, thank you for uh, admitting that. In this document over here, it stated that you were gonna, if you were to sell the property, you would need to be in an arm's length transaction. So you broke that rule, okay? And you also appear to have been in a contract to sell the property before you owned it for 90 days. So you broke that rule, okay? Well, unfortunately, sir, that's gonna lead to a very lengthy prison term. And he actually negotiated a plea deal that gave him 17 years in federal penitentiary for pleading guilty to that. Now, some of you are gonna have opinions like, this is crazy, how could somebody go to jail for 17 years because of incorrectly understanding the terms of a contract? Well, never underestimate the power of the banks. The banks and the federal government love each other. When the, Fed, when the banks got in trouble, who bailed them out? The federal government, that's what it is. They are in cahoots, they definitely scratch each other's backs and don't you ever think that you can get one over on a bank and not have the federal government get involved. So, the lesson to be learned here guys, the devil is 100% in the details. When you are signing contracts, when you are signing documents, do yourself and everybody a favor, read them. Read them, read what you're signing. And I can say that I have signed documents in the past that I have not read. It's never come back to bite me in the butt. But that story of watching this man go to prison for 17 years because he didn't quite understand or he didn't follow the, the fine print in a, in a contract is really scary. And that should be a lesson for all of us to take heed to. When you're in, entering into contracts, know what you're entering into, read the documents, and be mindful of the fact that you are entering into a legal contract that has significant legal ramifications. Some of those might mean prison time if you don't follow the rules. So that's just a lesson for all of us. Make sure that you're dotting your I's, crossing your T's, and you're doing business in the appropriate ways. This is a very lucrative, lucrative business, and it can change your financial life but it can also land you in jail for 17 years. Now, if you guys like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on my socials at jdamji on Instagram or Jamil Damji on Facebook. Also, every Monday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, I'm on Wholesale Hotline with Pace Morby and Brent Daniels. It's a live Q&A, an opportunity for you to ask us any question that's wholesale related. And in addition to that, Every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I do a live comping show called Straight Outta Comping with my friend Emily Vote, and we crush it. So if you have a deal that you need to know how much you should pay for, come and check us out on that comping show, and we'll see you there.